stayed for a five. He ain't no stranger to the show, Heather B. You know, we just had him. Uh, I, I kind of used him in a sense, man. I pulled him in a conversation, you know, because I thought, man, it would be really fruitful to have uh, the young man Casanova uh, uh, communicate with um, Bumpy Knuckles, Freddie Fox. I think every artist, uh, especially rap artists, uh, should get get a moment where they sit and talk with people who've been doing what you're doing for decades. It mm-hmm. can only be beneficial. Mm-hmm. You know, we could take it back to Freddie Fox is here, the crazy like a Fox days. We brought up industry shakedown days. You know, these are all albums that we was really, really going hard for on the West Coast. Right. Um, with the world famous Wake Up Show. King Tech. What's up, Tech? You know, yeah. and because we, we, we didn't know what was going on necessarily in the East Coast. You didn't have all the digital apparatuses to kind of keep you informed. And so the only thing we could really uh, get insight to is, by the way, a person talked in their music. So from that, you could decipher whether what they were saying was real or, or was it fake. Mm-hmm. And then we, we tend to gravitate towards what was real, kind of like a moth does to the light. You know, that's what we gravitated towards. So that's how I first gravitated towards him. I mean, since I've been in New York, um, we solidified our relationship and it became more than just rap. You know, we sit around and have an hour long time. I don't talk to nobody on the phone, hardly, not even my daughter for longer Mm -hmm. than 10 minutes. But Mm -hmm. we'll sit up on the phone for 90 minutes and uh, feel like we're in high school, Mm -hmm. you know, some talking about the school dance or some shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the 90 minutes just be full with quality, be full with great information. One of the wisest people I know in the music business, every aspect of it he knows. If you want a producer, he can produce. If you want a DJ, he can DJ. If you want a writer, he can write. If you want an engineer, he can engineer. If you want a promoter, he's a promoter. If you want to put out music, he's a distributor. He's done it all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome him to the show, the one and only Bumpy Knuckles. Uh, Freddy Fox yeah, is here. Man. Ah, welcome home, I should say. Yeah, myself, welcome right? home. Yeah. Welcome home. Uh, yeah. Got the new uh, album, the new project, the new album, Bumpy Knuckles and Knots Pop Duke Volume yeah. 1. Yeah. That's out right now. You can pick it up. He's doing it independent, but he didn't come alone. Um, and I, 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 normally, I'm the guy that does the intro, but I'm going to let you do the intro to this man because what I know, I'm not sure if it's true or not. I heard a lot of legend about him. Uh, yeah. From back in the day, yeah, <laughs> had traveled true. all the way to the West Coast, yeah. but I never done the research. Yeah. Um, but he's here with you, so I, I'm figuring it must be true. Tell me who we got sitting next yeah, to. Yeah, I brought my boy with me, man. This is my dog, man. This is rap. Rap is r- rap Good is a uh, 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 legendary guy from 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 the world from the streets. It's like he he uh, started the paid in full posse years ago. Okay, stop right there. So yeah. as you speak, I'm gonna have you to break down what the paid in full posse is because most mm-hmm. people know paid in full. That terminology from when Eric B and Rock Kim came out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with, so I met with him. the project paid yeah. in full. Okay, go right. ahead. Met him with being with the paid in full posse. I met him with Eric B, Rock Kim, and all them guys. Man, this is the guy that you see on the back. Of the album cover with all the jewels Thank on you. and the, mm-hmm. the Fila suit and all mm-hmm. that, you know, rap has been uh, away for many years. He, he made it back to the streets, man, and that's why you hear on the front of head count. Mm-hmm. You know, he said all the people that didn't think I'd make it back to the streets, you eat shit and bark at the moon. Okay, you know, oh, that's <laughs> you that said that. Yeah, that's, that's me. That was you said that. <laughs> Who was the paid in full posse rap? Well, like, what well, was, what, how was did a, that start? It was a group that I put together with Fifty Cent, mm-hmm. Killer Band, a whole group. It was about getting money. Uh-huh. And I started like that. It was like from the hood and giving back to the hood. Uh-huh. So that's why I call it paid in full, posse. Okay. You know, it was about respecting the parents and everything. It wasn't like it is now. Okay. You couldn't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you take and give at the same time. Okay. So what year did that start about? Like about... 79, 79, 79. So you yes. saying the original 50 the cent. Original 50 cent. Okay. Yes. And so, the, so, and I know a lot of, you know, uh, what we call gangs on the West Coast started about uh, really initially protecting the community mm-hmm. and doing the same thing, you know, keeping the, prote- protecting the people that lived in the community. Paid in full posse was about that initially. Yes. Okay. So where did all these stories come from? <laughs> wow, I've been, I could go on and on and on. You know, you know, you know cuz we would just hear like that was on the West Coast, we would get pieces and bits. So paid in full posse was just a crew you didn't mess with. You know. Right. Uh, That's the truth there. A, a murderous crew yes, that you didn't yes, a criminal crew that you I didn't. I paid my dues for it too. I okay. did 33 years mm. uh-huh. flat. Uh-huh. And nothing, nothing to be proud of, you know. Yeah. But I paid my dues. 
Uh-huh. And now I'm out here. And now, and now I'm showing the kids and whatnot that this ain't what you got to do. You know, you ain't got to go out here and shoot everybody. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like what people think. You come in the penitentiary and it's like, oh, I'm going to get a free meal and all that. Uh-huh. No. You come out looking ragged. You don't see no scars on me. Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah. What was that? I mean, 33 years. How do you survive 33 years? Man, I, I survived. I've been through the hardest hardcore prisons in New York State uh-huh. and feds. Uh-huh. I've been through it all, Maxi Max, Super Max. Uh-huh. I went through it. I went through it. I caught head counts in there, uh-huh. and this is why I say head counts, because I do got a lot of head counts, and I pay my dues for it. What does head so, counts mean? Head counts mean lay them down. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. That's what it means. And, 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 I mean, in their life. In my life, that's what it is. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Um, and so when you see like gun violence right now is so rampant, you know. Um, do you feel an obligation? Do you feel guilty about it? Because a lot of people are emulating what you guys did. Yeah, not really, though. But what I feel like right now is like people just killing for nothing. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's different if somebody's going to try to take your life. Then you got to do what you got to do. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. At that time, the academic with the crack and everything was out there. Uh-huh. You know that. Yeah. So everybody was involved of doing this and trying to protect this and trying to protect that. But the paid and full posse, you could never get close to it. Uh-huh. What was the paid in full posse? Like, where were y'all located at that time? And we was located in Brooklyn, Fort Greene. But then we wow. branched out all over the state. Uh-huh. Wherever we go, we lay it down. Uh-huh. Did, That's one thing. Did y'all, did y'all uh, like, network with other crews outside of yes, the state? Yes, we met all type. I met all type of crews from everywhere, from Massachusetts, Ohio, D.C., you name it. Uh-huh. I was there. Baltimore, uh-huh. that time Baltimore had war with New York. Uh-huh. I went and solved it, you know, because uh-huh. I don't think nobody more crazy than me. Yeah, you, you be rap, <laughs> man. What's well, it? Rap, soft, damn, man. man. <laughs> Are you sitting here and sway in the morning? Should I be worried, rap? <laughs> 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 I don't think about it. I just go keep it 1,000. You go keep it 1,000? That's right. Oh, man, this is so interesting to me. Yeah. Did, did, did you think um, when you got locked down, did you realize that, or did you think that, damn, if I could have took that same, because you organized, you mm-hmm. put together a gigantic right. network and organization, and you had a business, even though it was on the other side of the law, That's correct. it's still a business. Still so the principles, business. did you think that, damn, I wasted my talents, I could have did this another way? Yes, Mm. I, I, now that I look back, I said, yeah, I could have did another way mm-hmm. and put it together different. Mm-hmm. You know, set it into the drug game, I could have put it into a positive game. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like right now I'm going into all the precincts, talking to all the kids and so forth. Let them meet me because I want to give it to them the real way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not this cut up and all this here. They think you're fabricating this here. Oh, no, this is the real deal you're getting from me. Mm-hmm. How How hard or easy is it for you to communicate with the, the younger kids. Very easy. They, I look them in the eye. They look me in the eye and tell them, you ain't tougher than me, son. Mm. You ain't been there where I came from. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm from a baby in a crazy house with a straight jacket. From a baby. Mm. Yeah. You know, who, who, who would ever think that a 12-year-old being a straight jacket for four years in a crazy house for killing two bullies? That's you? That's me. That's your life? And I paid that. You know what I mean? I paid that. That's why I could speak on. Anything I could speak on, I paid for it. Uh-huh. With my life. H- how'd y'all meet? Shit, Ray Paul was, man, I know Ray Paul for years. And then when he went to prison, you know, I I was I remember talking to him on the phone. And the, and the, the day that he got sentenced, I said, like, yo, dog, like, we got to, you gonna, I'm going to have to hold you down on this one because, you know, he was, he was in a jam, so. I just, you know, we just bonded that way. I started, there was a time that I got blackballed in the game, so to speak. <laughs> they, that's what they call it. I'm mm-hmm. born black and bald. But in I the music got, business. In the music yeah, business, yeah. yeah. And when I got blackballed, they, I needed to still make music. So he opened up the prisons for me to be able to come in to the jails. I did performances in the jail yards. And I was, I, I, they built a stage for me in, in, wow. in, in the yard. And, and I was doing shows in prison. And I was, I built this, I had this thing called Cell. To sell S E L L to C E L L. So I said, This is how we're going to get money. I'm, you tell every, you, I'm going to send you these pamphlets to the law library. You put them in, and then people saw that I had a list of all the music that they could order. So they would send me the orders and I would make the cassettes for them and send them in 
through, wow. through from a record store because uh-huh. you can't get them from you know from from you can't you see have CDs and stuff like that and you got to come it got to come from a business like a record store or something like that so I started selling them CDs in the jail and then going in there and doing concerts inside the penitentiary so I started doing a lot of that and that's all I know rap for over 30 years I always right? tell them man I said listen you got to smile yeah, he's always said that. Stop. Okay. You're running the money away. You're running the money away. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? He's just say, Bob, you look too he's, mean. You're running the look. money away. This is my big homie. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, you, you're running the money away. You got a smile. Yeah. Plus, you got a nice smile. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Fox. Yeah. Come on, man. You got a nice smile. <laughs> well, I would appreciate the ladies Listen, saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies yeah. ain't saying nothing to you. He got a good smile. He got a good smile. I got a good one. Okay. Um, Let me ask you this. Who were the original members of the Paid and Full Posse? Well, uh, Juju, me, Killer Band, Killer, 50, KB, my brother Supreme. Uh, it was 32, really, 30, all together. 32 people? Yeah, I made, a, I made a table in the chair, and I sat 32 people down on the, on, on the table. So it was organized? Yes. And I told him, I said, listen, whatever we do in life and whatever goes on in here stays in here. And no matter what happens, if anything happens to anybody, we put everything in there so that person gets out. I would never want anybody to go to prison or stay in prison. One day you could get cut in the face. One day a warrant could drop. One day you could get in life. Like I had got life. Uh-huh. You see? So when I organized that and I told him, I said, I dare anybody to leave anybody left behind. Uh-huh. And if you do, I will hunt you down like a bounty hunter. How did y'all deal with betrayal? Did y'all have betrayal in the We court? didn't have betrayal. That was the good thing, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that came out of all this. That nobody never backstabbed nobody. You know why? Why? Because if I had a car, you had a car. You bought your mama a house, I bought my mama a house. You did this, I did that. I made sure everybody was even. Mm. Uh, when you were um, locked up and you start seeing the rise of like hip hop and Brooklyn rap, you know, and then obviously a lot of folks were dressing and and as- assuming a lot of persona that you guys live mm-hmm. naturally, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, did you cheer that on, man? When you see guys like Biggie, you see, you know, Jay Z or yeah, a I met fabulous- Tupac. I went yeah. up there to to sell and talk to him. Uh-huh. And soon as he, he he sent me one. Yeah, I read, when Pac yeah. was locked up, when Pac was locked up, I wrote I wrote them and told him, "Yo, look out for him. That's my boy." You uh-huh. know, and him and a few other cats really made sure he was good. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. he was having some issues in there. Yeah, you know, but. When they when they when the six family got on him, it was another story. It it was he was okay. Yeah, he was okay. I go up there, he like, well, I said, listen, you know Bumpy Knuckles, Freddie Fox, that's my brother. Mm-hmm. I said, my name is Rap Boy. He said, man, you run this prison, don't you? I said, man, I don't run nothing. I'm just here to make sure you're all right. Mm-hmm. But really, I did. What did I, he talk to you about? If you could share what you could share. He was like telling me, man, when he get out this time, he going to do a whole new different outlook on life. It's not going to be like this here. He's going to be more respected towards women and whatnot, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, you know, and I'm just vibing with him on a regular tip, just like I'm vibing with you. Uh-huh. You know. So what's your overall message you want to you want to give? Because, hey, man, you, you got this platform to speak, you know. This is my brother, so he, mm-hmm. you know, for the fact that he even brought you up here, he didn't even tell me. He was just, you know, you know, and so this is a pleasant surprise. Um, it's my pleasure meeting all of y'all. Pleasures are. Well. So, Thank you. I, but I'm an advocate of really trying to change the mindset in our communities, you know, on every level uh, for how we treat ourselves as individuals. I look on Instagram, I see a lot of dudes putting up guns and threatening to kill folks with these guns not realizing damn those folks you threaten to kill are your brothers your cousins your mm-hmm. sisters i see a lot your of own us, people your own people disrespect towards our women you know who are basically don't have the same platforms to voice who they are they're not being that that who they are to this community is not being put forward i see a lot of money being you know spent in other communities but not ours and and we're great-minded people, you know. We're, in, you know, we got a lot of ingenuity. We, you know, we got a lot of promise. What message would you send to those who yeah, seem like they see, begging this, to go to jail? Yeah, this is the message I want to give. Spend time with people. I don't mm-hmm. care how young, how old you are. Talk to people. Some people need that, you know, to grab that ear mm-hmm. and to give it to them the right way. A lot of people don't do that. 
You got a lot of fathers don't even do that. You know what I mean? You got other people's taking care of other people's kids and whatnot. Spend some time. Let them hear you. That's all. Sometimes people just want to be heard. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? To see what it really is and where, really where you came from and feel you like the way they're supposed to feel you. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Uh-huh. Not like that fake, oh, man, go ahead with that. I don't want, not me. I spend time with anybody, yeah. women's or men's. It don't matter with me because I've been through where it was rough. Yeah. Straight jacket at 12, man. That's, that's, that's yeah. don't, don't think it's rougher than that rap. Yes, you heard about that. Hey, did you used to try to wiggle out the jacket? No, nah. you can't wiggle out that jacket, man. You can't. And you look at me now, you'll say, like, wow, did he really been through that? Yeah. Yes, I have. Okay, Trace, you want to ask a question? Yeah, I'm really going on the, the route of mindset. Has your spirituality changed at all? Because to pass the time of 30 plus years, you know what I mean? It's a mental game, it's an emotional game. What's your relationship like? Yes, with the you're right power? about that because I did 14 years in solitary confinement. And they thought I was going to go crazy. So what I started doing is reading. I started exercising, get my mind together. And I said, this is it for me. After I get out of here, they will never see me again in this spot like this here. Mm-hmm. I have to keep my mind strong because to be in solitary confinement only one hour for 14 years. And I slept on a hard floor. So I always wanted to, you know what I mean? I'll get the Bible, I'll get the Quran, uh-huh. I stay okay. busy on everything, Tip. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I believe in, in God and the law and every every other religion. I try to, I'm like a goulash. I try to serve everything that come my way uh-huh. just to keep my mind occupied. Because I said, I ain't going to go crazy. I may be crazy on the inside, but not on the outside. Uh-huh. This here ain't going to go crazy. Right. Rap is here. Uh, uh, Freddie Fox, Bumpy Knuckles yeah. is here. Bumpy Knuckles and Knots Pop Duke Volume One is the project. Yeah. Kedra's on the line from Mississippi. Go ahead, Kedra. Good morning. You. Good morning. Um, uh, shout out to y'all. I okay. love y'all. I've been calling here. This is my third time calling. I finally got through. Okay, okay. you made it, girl. You got to turn I your radio it? down. See, see, I can tell you, you, you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. My okay. bad. My bad. All my right, bad. go ahead. What's your question? Um. I just want to say the Bubby Nuts and Freddie Fox. Like, in the hip-hop game, it's a lot of motherfuckers that talk about that shit, but they ain't really about that shit. And just listening to him talk, I see he about that shit. And back in the drug game, from what I've known, I've never been in it, but from motherfuckers that I know, um, y'all really about that shit. Like... It's motherfuckers that talk about it, but they ain't really about it. Like that Robin Hood mentality. So I commend y'all for taking that negative and making it into a positive. Um, and that's all I want to say, man. Just listening to them talk is like profound right now. Hmm. You should listen to a, a couple of songs on this album. Um, one in particular called uh, Motivation. Um, and then another one called New Enemy. Um, that I think is really interesting. Um, matter of fact, get the album. Um, we, we'll probably play one or two of them before the, before the, uh, before Freddie Fox has to uh, go. But right now, since we got rap here, man, we got to play that head count. You know, we're gonna play that head count and then open up these phone lines eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Sway in the morning. Bumpy Knuckles is here. Yeah, Bumpy Knuckles and Knots Pop Duke Volume One. Yeah, shout to my dude Knots. Not Norfolk, stand up. What's happening in Norfolk? We got a rap from Brooklyn here. How's everybody? Founder of the <laughs> Paid in Full Posse. Mm. Did, man, y'all, are y'all going to ever do a documentary? Doing it now. He's doing it. Yeah, he's working on it. He's really? working on yeah. it, yeah. It's called a real rap. It's called a real rap. Real rap? <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. What's, my, what's my role in it? Which role mm. you want? <laughs> you know, That's you, it. You, you yeah. can either you can produce it, you can pay for it. You can, <laughs> whatever you want. Okay, you, you, right. you, okay. Put it in your hands. Put it in my hands. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. Funny. All right, man. Don't be chasing me though. I'm. A, I might put something on it. Uh, you all right? Yeah, but after right. that, okay. man, don't be. You know, yeah. rap. Don't be coming up to my house right. or nothing. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Funny. We got Sarita on the line from Kansas. Sarita, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to ask: Was is he talking about the real Fifty Cent? That's a part of. Yes, baby. Yeah, the, yeah. mm-hmm. the real 50 Cent. Yes. Well, the, the, the original 50 Cent. Yeah, so I'll, that's pretty dope because, like, I studied hip-hop real hard. 
and to just hear you know his name out there because he was he was part he's part of the legacy too. And a lot of people don't know that he was really like in the game like that. But I really commend y'all, and um, I'm listening to y'all music. Just keep on going, keep hip hop alive because my stream is still there. Um, I write music too, so being 26, I'm a hip hop head. So mm -hmm. that's what's I'm up. Listening. Yo, support this project. Be a, be a hip-hop head and support this project because he's doing it independent, okay? Yeah, no doubt. All right. Will do. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, okay we got uh, Chanel on the line from the Bronx. Go ahead, Chanel. Hey, Chanel. Hey, good morning, y'all. What's good up? Morning. Um, I'm from the Bronx, but right now I'm living in Marathon, Florida, and I was listening to y'all. And um, I just want to say, y'all, I recognize, you know, the, the hustle and grind, and it's a blessing, you know, sometimes when we go through those hard times. Then we look back at them and say, like, yo, we changed and we grew. And, you know, we are eventually blessed with good things from all the hard shit that we've been through. And sometimes it comes right back around and doubles. Um, so a lot of people, you know, they go through shit and they stay doing that same shit. But the other people who come over that bridge and they get to grow spiritually and understand what they're going through, yo, that's a whole nother world. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to congratulate all y'all that's in that studio. And I want to just represent for everybody in the hood and just say thank you. And, yo, keep speaking on the truth. Word. Because these kids here, yo, I'm 35. I got four boys. Like I said, yo, I'm from the Bronx. I grew up on Cypress and Brook Ave. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And me, you know, coming from a female uh, part of, of life, you know, I didn't go through... You know, I ain't lay no bodies out or nothing, but I went through some hard female shit, you know? Right. Um, abusive relationships. But just to hear real dudes or just real people generally, it, it's refreshing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're a citizen. I was sway in the morning. I was going to say that. I always wanted to say that. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm okay. sorry, Heather. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to step That's on your toe. Okay, okay yo, well, look, we'll take another call. We'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that was fun. You got to get back. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we Fox got giving out citizenships to uh, the Fox here, Freddie Fox uh, giving out citizenship. The gatekeeper. Okay, Dominique, what up? She's in North Carolina. <laughs> Dominique, what's popping? What up? What up? What up? Just to hear y'all, Mr. Knuckles, speaking hey. on what my sister was saying earlier. I'm from Jersey, North, straight like that. Absolute North, North. North. Word. So I definitely understand. I'm in North Carolina now, raising a son, 16. But what I wanted to say, Mr. Knuckles, is what I'm keeping out. I've lived a couple of places, military wife. What I see is a total lack of disrespect among minorities in general. Yeah. As far as the game go, my dad is straight OG from Baltimore. My dad told me how to cook up when I was young, yeah. and it's not right, but he always told me he's not going, not going to be out here selling that ass, trying to get money. I'm going to show you what it is. He showed me the plug. You feel me? So I understand the hustle and grind, but what I want to know for you, be a lockdown all this time, and I'm so happy to be free, brother. So happy for me. Thank but you. But what I want to really know is, what did you see as far as, like you said, the games that Sway was touching on earlier? What do you think the breakup of it is in our community? I really think it's a lack of respect. Everybody wants it, but nobody giving it. Yeah, well, that question must be for rap, because let me just clarify something. I don't sell no drugs. I ain't never sold a crack vial in my life. Mm -hmm. I did other shit. I done knocked niggas upside their head. I lost my brother to the drug game. I lost. And and, and a lot of times, people who have who have done that, they they, you know, they talk about their experience. I don't think you're going to find no record that I made where I ever said I sold anything. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I dibble dabbled in a few things, but I ain't never sold no drugs. No drugs. And that's okay. not my thing. It okay. wasn't my hustle. All right. And you know, rap, is, rap was doing what he was doing, yeah, and he could speak for that. himself. I did know? that from young and whatnot. You know, that was just the come up, man, and to live and to feed everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and to see everybody have what they never could have had, like, you know? Uh -huh. Like, you know, little baby said, I wish I had a bike, man. I can't buy a bike. My mother ain't got the money. Here, you can buy a bike now. Uh -huh. That's how I was when I was coming up and into the game. Uh -huh. I made sure everybody was happy. Uh -huh. But then you you were selling it in the community where everybody wasn't happy. No, nah, so. not, not really all the time in the community uh -huh. because – I used to tell him that. I said I was kind of weird, like when I was selling. Like I may, I'm, you know, not trying to be racist or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But mainly, I sold to a lot of crackers too, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm keeping one hundred. <laughs> you know, 
That's what, what I do. Your people was right. on smack. Uh, Talk about your people, what the... Uh, the feds uh, or... Uh, yeah. Confirmed. Hey, defend or confirmed. Keep it one thousand. Uh, uh, people are drugs. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you uh, not trying and to be. I, was, I, was I know Eric. Gonna, I know Eric. Like, 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 you <laughs> couldn't. You couldn't be in my crew and sell and sell to a pregnant woman. Because right. I yeah. would have. I would have put you down immediately. Mm-hmm. That I would not accept. You couldn't sell to nobody's mom, mother. You know. Yeah. That's the first thing. Because I'm always in the first. Everybody's here, I'm in the front. Yeah. So I see everything, I go, never, ever do that. To uh-huh. no babies, to no mothers, and to no pregnant women. Uh-huh. I mean, if you if you on drugs, you're going to get it regardless whether you're going to get it from me or anybody else. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. But I did not allow or what I, no mothers, no kids, none of that. Mm. Eric B. has been such an important part of um, hip-hop history and then um, important in the sense of he, he served as a liaison from one of those people who actually um, I consider to be true to who we what we saw on that vinyl or what we mm-hmm. saw on that album cover or, mm-hmm. you know, and to this day he's one of the most solid people um, sure. I've Absolutely. ever had a chance to communicate with and be in this business. We love Eric B. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we so used to come down the way one time. Let me give you a little short story. And me and him were sitting on the sidewalk one day. We had like a hundred thousand dollars worth of jewels, maybe even more. Mm-hmm. Everything iced out, everything. And we went into this Chinese spot, and we sat on the on the sidewalk right there and ate Chinese. Everybody looking at, everybody like, damn, rap. Right? What's going on? I said, what you mean, what's going on? We eat Chinese food. What's, I mean, you never seen nobody eat no Chinese food on the sidewalk? <laughs> He's like, no, but not with all that stuff on. Like, you know what I mean? Because we can do that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can do that. But that's a testament to, I think, because uh, well, we just had these conversations earlier about people in the rap game that put up these personas but ain't true to it. And that's one of the things we caught from, even being on the West Coast, mm-hmm. about Eric B. Okay, that's a real one right there you know and uh just to hear this history um even uh confirms that even more so shout out to eric b and rock him both and of them and rock him yeah both of them are general no for doubt. sure no, okay um and then you mentioned supreme yes uh there were a lot of people named supreme back in the day which supreme is was supreme this was my little brother supreme magnetic supreme magnetic right yes uh-huh and he was like another version of me but uh-huh. more smoother Okay. Not no head count, none of that, yeah? You know? Uh-huh. More smooth. I'm the enforcer. He was the brain. He was the brain. All right, yes. That that's not the same Supreme we know, is it? Yeah. That's yes. the same Supreme? Yes, that's yes. the same. Yeah. That's the same one. They look just a fucking little. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 hell yeah. That's uh-huh. his brother, yeah. yeah. The Supreme that we know from, that was... From... from Supreme that be with Eric and Rakim and yeah yeah that's, yep, that's the yeah. same yeah, that's that's same brother. one yeah yeah okay all right yeah. I'm and the oldest I'm 60 years old I'm on the sixth floor there's mm-hmm. also Kenneth McGriff Griff, that, yeah. that you might think of as well a, that's that's from the Supreme team that's from the Supreme oh, that's team that's my man there. yeah yeah that was I your man him. I know him. yes I do know him. what was he what was what, what was y'all relation like we was real cool cause really he was the smart one and the thinker and the nephew was the more was it wasn't the thinker. Mm-hmm. And that's what brought the ship down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going we gonna to go ahead and pa- tap out right there. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tap out right there, ladies and the gentlemen. That's the, that, that, that's <laughs> a, <laughs> out. For real. All right, hold up. I got to do one thing, man, real History. quick. Mike Mike from Jersey, what you want to say real Jersey, quick? stand up. Hey. Hey, hey, what's going on, y'all? What's going on? You can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to, you know, just just a dope ass interview, man. I ain't gonna lie, I'm sitting in my truck, man, <laughs> just listening to this shit. You know, I, I I relate so much with this story. You know, I did ten years too. You know, I, but I I came out. You know, I don't do no kind of illegal shit. It is now. You know, I'm just I'm just here to say you, you can make a better life. You know, you can do better once you get out of prison. You know, what I mean, it ain't always about you know that that fast life, that money or whatever. But this just this interview is so fucking dope, man. I swear you always do it, man. This is the first time I ever say, listen, man. I don't even want to hear no music. I want to hear this brother talk because it's bringing back so much, so much in me that you know, it's just I don't even know what the fucking. 
<laughs> well, you know what, Mike? You officially a citizen. I'm swaying yeah. the motherfucking morning. Yeah. 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 That was a good one. Oh, man. There you go. All right. John from Illinois. Good morning, John. You hey, got Johnny. How you doing, bro? I'm doing all right, Sway. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. What would you like to say? I mean, you know, the interview is cool and everything. Everybody's got a past. I mean, I get it. But, you know, to glorify selling drugs, you know, to crackers, so-called white people or whatever, and then saying, you know, that that's funny. And then to say that I saw, uh, we don't sell to pregnant women or the women or whatever else. I just think that that's cliche. Um, we should never glorify the struggles that, that go on inside neighborhoods, no matter what color you are. So I thought it was, it was pretty, it just sounded stupid. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, I, I just don't get it. Is it funny because we sell drugs to white people? Or is, I mean, is that, is that comical? Or, but it's okay because we didn't sell to women or pregnant women. Like, come on, man. Let's get better. Let's teach the youth. Yeah, well, not like everybody is not going to like the path you chose rap and well, you can you can understand that yes i, I can I, 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 and, and maybe i was ignorant for laughing i just thought the comment of i'm not racist and but i only sold drugs to crackers that you know that to me that's two opposites you know that's kind of saying the same thing uh but how you respond to that what he just said rap well to, you know to each his own some people you know when they into the game they just let loose and just sell to everybody. I was just totally different, man. You mm-hmm. know, whether people understood me or not, that just was me. His, you know? his his point is, drugs shouldn't have been sold in the first place. Yes, sir, no matter, but listen, the government the government have been bring sold in the first place. The yeah. government the fuck, bring man. it in, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Let's 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 start there. The government bring the drugs. Yeah, we don't bring it. John, you want to come? You want to respond to that? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, listen, I mean, everybody got a choice. You know, I'm 40 years old myself. You know what I mean? So my life ain't always been perfect. And, and, I, and brother, listen, I, I respect your hustle. Don't get it wrong. I mean, we all come from our own environment, so I get it. But we all have a choice. At the end of the day, I got two sons. You know, some, some of us don't think about that. We just get out there and get the money because that's what we want. That's, you know, we everything is accessible, you know. So, yeah, the government might bring the drugs. Yeah, maybe, but we still have a choice. My thing is this, racism still goes on each day out here, okay? It doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, if you're Mexican, there's poverty, you know? And what we, what's, we, we're not focused on is that a lot of this stuff's not funny, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not, I don't care who bought the drugs or who sold the drugs, you know, what's right, what's wrong? What are we teaching people today? Yeah, I got you, though. That's years, 30-something years ago, though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now... You can't get me to do nothing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then John too. He, he out here telling these kids, "Don't do what I did," and right. and, and, and and not for nothing. I can respect that because a lot of uh, folks who've been through it ain't sharing their experiences and trying to convince people like your sons. Hey, man, make sure you don't go down this path. You don't I mean, want it. Trust me. Yeah, I, I I get that, I, and I respect the story. I'm a huge Eric B. and Rakim fan. I know the Supreme story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like. It's it's not it's not like I'm I'm not trying to be disrespectful. All I'm saying is is that at the end of the day, man, it doesn't matter what color you are. You know, there's there's people that use drugs, there's people that sell drugs, and there's people that bring drugs. You know, it's all it's all the same story. But man, let's let's send a positive message, man. You know, let's let's not laugh about it. Let's not make it funny. It's not cool that you didn't. You know, we sold we sold to this person, but. We didn't sell to this person because of this. It's, there's no right or wrong. That okay. really bothered you, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, I just don't like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I never sold drugs. I never in my life sold drugs because I felt it was cool or because of whatever else. I did it because I had to put food on the table. Yeah. All right. Uh, man, that's fair enough, man. That's what we do on this show, man. We we want to get everybody's perspective. We appreciate yours. Fox, you ready? John, you a citizen. Of Sway and the God damn on <laughs> There it is. <laughs> I've been waiting to do that. I don't, I don't want to do it no more. Heather's <laughs> better than me. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> this, this, we, got, we got Omar Epps that's about to come in here um, momentarily, uh, and he got a new book uh, nice. called Fall, From Fall. Fatherless to Fatherhood, yeah. and uh, we're going to talk about that. But, Rap, I want to thank you for coming through. Thank you. You know, thank and... Um, 
you ain't got to talk about these things. But I think uh, regardless of how folks may feel one way or the other, we're all learning something about it, mm-hmm. you know. And I hope these kids can hear it and know yeah. that you don't want to make the same choices that no, you made, you know. Exactly. And yeah. I'm not going to make it again either. Yeah, And that's good you know? to hear, man. I'm going to every precinct, every little community where I can go, and I'm going to let them know, man. Right. Don't go this path, this path. Yeah. Because you may not come back out. Yeah. It's not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Bad. Well, everybody look at TV. Oh, so sweet. Oh, I could go in there and do that. Oh, it's like this. It's not like that what you see on TV. You may go in and not come back out. Hmm. Or spend the rest of your life I'll in. spend the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. Man, I had a I had a dream law. I had to eat law. I had a shit law. I had to do everything. That's how I got to learn law because of the time that I got. Mm-hmm. I said, man, I got to do something better than this. I got to get out of this hole here. You regret the decisions you made? I don't never regret anything I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just do better. Mm-hmm. My man rap. That's Thank you I for coming down. Yeah. All right. I can't wait for that you know doc. Fox, I want you to end the show with a performance, man. Oh, word. Yeah, we got a, a song I want you to perform. Oh, oh word. That's you know. <laughs> shit, turn that motherfucker on. So, well, tell us turn about the up. song. Tell us about the song first, real quick. I'll tell you what i tell you, nigga. Okay. I, I never was a crack dealer. <laughs> shit wasn't my style. See, every nigga think he Montana when that bitch smile. Now she rubbing on your six pack and she gon' fuck you till the sun come up Then blow your fucking wig back <laughs> Cornball, I tried to warn y'all I'ma spit a jewel at you I never point a tool at you Then I don't pull the trigger on You be another punk nigga gone Come on Long before niggas knew the booth could make them Superman I was on stage spitting murder over super sperm You was just a sperm When I was spitting pressure on the brain For all my niggas doing prison terms So under no uncertain terms Will I allow any of y'all slippery ass slimy worms to be disrespectful with the grimy words? Who you killing? You niggas still can't kill rhyming words. Words. See, so turn this mic on. You see what I'm saying? Yes, so turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it out. Turn it up. Turn it up because it's about to get lit. Is this mic pop, dude? Turn on. I'm going to hit you with a second verse. You, second verse. Right, you want a second verse? Yep. All right, this is for the young boys out here. Listen to this shit right here. Listen, what I put into this game could feed young niggas who really want to eat off. Music in the street beat off. Fader down, beat off. Voice raised on vinyl. Word. Best era, that's final. I spit this vocal element from scratch. Each bar is a cinder block bonded with words that somehow seem to interlock. Bonded. No crack, no rulers. Real rap, no rumors. My hood is on the map beat, and I'm the one that put it there. Tell all these fucking clowns, take off them rubber crowns. When blocks hustle rocks and lyrics is what you got. Niggas was on they hustle, some niggas was not. Bars at 11, scars that I never unwrap, but I rewrap for y'all. Last forever. What I spit is a gift to keep you swift. It's the ball headed sensei, still on that chin play. Check out the sucker shit these wanna be men say. I send them niggas knots. Debo every block. This microphone on so that we can connect Bumpy knuckles sway in the morning Show a G is respect Connect Word Turn this mic on Turn that mic on Is that mic turned on? Turn it on What? Turn it up Turn it up Turn it up Turn it up You know why? Why? Because it's about to get lit What? Is this mic Is this mic Yo, yo, turn the mic on Is this on? Make it so it's on Turn it up You gonna say something this motherfucker Say it Turn it up Turn it up Turn it up You know why? Why? About to get lit Freddy Fox Bumpy Knuckles My man rap Get the new album Bumpy Knuckles And not Pop Salute the Strong Island I love y'all niggas out there Love you too, man That's how we doing it Swing the morning Shade 4 5 The realest we got Omar Epps up Corrupt next. Mall. You want to talk with Omar Epps, 888-742-3345.